Hello, beautiful beings. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but it's been incredibly intense lately. The energy has been incredibly intense and heavy, and it feels sad. And every once in a while, you know, I don't know. They're saying that, you know, there are some planets, maybe just one. Neptune is retrograde. And I'm not an astrologer, but I know from my own personal experience that when planets go retrograde, it is a review of things that I felt like I already resolved. <laughs> so for the last almost two weeks now, just this parade of subjects, you name it, is up for me to look at again. And, you know, I just realized, I started realizing yesterday and today that I'm in a shed. And it's so tricky because it just feels like loneliness or it just feels like this or that or, or the desire for more money. or But I'm in a shed because when I'm not in a shed, I don't feel any of those things. I feel really super peaceful. So, Ancients, what should we talk about first? Well, the coolest thing I want to talk about first is... So a couple months ago, I was taking a picture in a dimly lit room, and so when the flash came on, I was looking at the screen of my phone, and when the flash lit the room up, I saw hundreds of orbs flying around. And it, I mean, it was, just, it was breathtaking. I had no idea what was going on. I have never seen that before. And so night after night, I kept doing it. I'd go in different rooms and do it. And there they were still. And so I've been doing this almost every single night for a couple months now. And last night, I discovered, I didn't realize that I actually had a flash on my video recorder on my phone. Uh, 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 let's see. A flash that stays on. And so last night I was able to, because that's the only way they show up, that I can't see them with the naked eye. And so I put the flash on and I started recording and there they were. So if you want to see these beautiful orbs, it's like, I've watched them so much now, it, it they're, um, they only go a few feet out from me, but it, it's like, I almost said it feels like because it does when I'm watching them. I can't feel it, but it does feel like they're coming out of me and they are definitely surrounding me. And some are so solid and slow moving, it just takes my breath away. What a gift. So if you have experienced that or heard of that, and it just gives me the most beautiful feeling, so I know it's nothing, you know, what is that, malevolent, nothing bad. It's coming from me. <laughs> it's wherever I go. If it's in a dimly lit room with the flash on, absolutely amazing. It's not my phone. It is orbs. And I've caught, I've caught some pictures of them. So if you would like to see this video that I recorded, it's about a 24 second video. Of course, I'm going to record more of them now that I know I can. Um, just email me at sotsongwithmamag at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. Oh my gosh. There's always, you know, no matter how heavy the energy feels or whatever I'm shedding, there's always something, something incredibly beautiful that happens. So, you know, I went to make a video just a little while ago, not today, but, you know, about four days ago, and I really wanted to talk about how I was feeling, but but I got scared to because I don't ever want to say anything that that sounds like it's encouraging young people or anybody for that matter, but especially young people to drink or smoke pot or, you know, reach for something to make them feel better. I don't, I don't ever want to, you know, be the one that, you know, they see my video and they go, oh, well that helped her, you know, maybe that'll help me. They're saying that, you know, a person is going to do it, whether they're going to do it or, you know, they're, 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 if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. So I just want to say that I really hope that none of my videos, you know, whatever I talk about, whatever, you know, I happen to be struggling with at the time, I hope that doesn't ever negatively influence any young people. So, but you know, I have to be authentic. I have to be myself. I, I cannot, 
I cannot, I cannot censor what is coming through, what I feel compelled to talk about. I cannot. It's from my heart. And there's a reason that I'm saying it. So hopefully, you know, somebody else will, if somebody else is struggling, they will see this and they'll be like, oh, wow, wow, I've been feeling the same way too. And, and, you know, they'll be able to see that they can get through it too. So, you know, in a nutshell, that's the purpose of, of my videos is, well, obviously to help other people. So... The, so the things that have been parading through is, um, you know, old loves. And one thing that I have not been doing this time around, you know, it's like, a, it's, um, is the a cyclical, the, these things come around in cycles to, to look at again, I've noticed over the years. And one of them is the person that I have perceived to be my twin flame. And he has come back around full circle. He's come parading back through and I have not messaged him. The, seriously, the desire to message him has been just, I have felt compelled to message him over these last almost four years and I have never gotten a response, which is fine. And um, I 100% I answer, uh, uh, realize why I haven't gotten a response. And one of those reasons is because I would not have grown as much as I have if he would have responded to me. I, I got to see if this is, yeah, it's okay. The thing started flashing, so, but I got an SD card, so I should never run out of space in my phone again. If you're frustrated because the little thing keeps popping up saying, uh, storage, space, storage ancients, please slow me down. <sighs> storage space running low. SD card. Bam. Totally fixed it. Says I have an endless amount, like almost an endless supply of space. So what I've been really, really, really trying not to do this time around, it's like semester finals or something. It's, it's, you know, it feels like I'm being tested, even though I know there's no, you know, people testing me. I feel like I'm being tested on what I've been learning. And so I did not reach out. Um, I've prayed a lot. Please remove this desire to message who I perceive to be my twin, unless if it's not for my highest good. And I have not messaged because there's no need for me to do that. That would be, that would be the personal identity of who I thought I used to be that would be her wanting to do it. And, you know, that's just more of what I'm shedding right now is that that unnecessary personal identity that I used to think was me. So what I would get if I messaged him, I would feel worse than not messaging him. So I would rather go through the uncomfortable feelings of wanting to reach out and not doing it than reaching out and getting crickets, getting abs, well, rejection. I guess my person needs a feeding of rejection. <laughs> yeah, you know, because when things get, well, things are really peaceful and calm. That's one reason my person wants to, you know, stir stuff up because she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. She thinks that things are boring and nothing's happening. Well, I don't, and I'm in charge. <laughs> so... You know, the more I don't feed these these thoughts with actions, the the sooner they they fade off, and 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 then the next cycle that comes around, and when he comes parading back around, and I have this desire to contact him, it will be much less, and it is much less, much much less than it was. It hasn't been almost three years. They're saying it's been three. It's uh, it's it hasn't been almost four years. It's been about three years. Since, um, you know, I haven't, I ha I have, haven't had any contact with him. I'm sorry. It's a full moon. <laughs> so there's a lot of energy coming through right now. So I quit, um, smoking mar med medical marijuana, uh, uh, two months ago. Yeah. Two months ago. Exactly. And, you know, that's been one thing that's been really up in my mind and I had, 
the most amazing talk with my mom today. And, you know, I told her, I said, I just, man, oh man, these things are just parading through and, and I miss having my dog so much and I want a dog so bad. And it's just all this stuff that I don't have, you know, that's what's up all the stuff I don't have. And, and, you know, I, I dive into silence and I, and I meditate in the silence and, and you know, and, but I still just, I, I, I'm shedding that they're saying it's, it's up, it's up over my eyes. I, it's shedding off. And, and so it's up. And so I just need to accept that and start. And, and I need to, you know, the automatic for me, if I'm feeling uncomfortable, if I'm thinking about something too much, is to try to get away from it and not feel that way anymore and not think about it anymore. But I'm realizing as I'm talking to you right now, I just need to accept it. I just need to accept it and and it's a phase. It will pass. I'm shedding. And, and just realizing the last couple days that I'm in a shed is a huge relief even though I still kind of feel monotone and suppressed in a way depressed in a way um, depressed as in the way of just kind of feel heavy and you know too much mental activity you know I've been spoiled I've been getting very spoiled with very very little uh, mental activity and when it does come back up it feels it doesn't I don't like it so, okay, I'm accepting that I'm in a shed, and that's actually really good news because when I come out of it, and every time I realize that I'm in a shed, I'm very close to the tail end of it. So, uh, I just feel when I come out of a shed, the shedding of, you know, the old identity, the, the personal identity that I, that I thought I was for so long, um, I just feel better than I did before I went through the shed. It's absolutely amazing. I I I will I bet I'll be making another video when I pop out of this. I've been re resisting recording videos for whatever reason my mind has said I've been following those thoughts. So, you know, I just seriously didn't realize I was going to make a video until 2 minutes before I started recording this and I was just like, "Wow, that feels so good." Yes, I would love to. Didn't know what I was going to talk about because I've been censoring myself, you know, because I, d I don't want to be a bad influence on any young people at all. I really don't. So, you know, I'm just going to go on faith that, that I won't be. So medical marijuana has been up for me lately because I haven't been wanting to feel... Yes, that's right. Thank you. They're amazing at reminding me. I remember making videos about worrying about because I was being I was forgetting what I was saying and then I just had to be in the silence and wait for it to come back in. But with practice, I'm not even worried about forgetting. It just comes comes back in. It's not bunny trailing anymore. So I had an amazing talk with my mom today and I said, you know, I've really been wanting to smoke again. It's been two months, like I said, and and all I was thinking about was how good I felt once I would smoke. Any of the mind activity, it would just fade away and I would just feel, feel good. However, that's the tricky thing with addiction for me is that when the mind, when I went back into smoking again, which I'm not saying was a mistake for me, I learned so much of it. I released more resistance around whatever I was shedding, you know, I smoked during the major bulk of this shedding process, but I don't feel like I need it anymore. It's not incredibly painful. It's just uncomfortable and I don't like it. But guess what? It's global. It's not just me. Millions of people are shedding right now. Millions of people are feeling exactly what I'm feeling to a much more intense degree. Like my mom, she was with my dad for 64 years and she, it's only been a year and a half and she's on her own for the first time since she's been 14 years old. It just makes me want to cry, you know? And so, but she's so sweet because she listens to, she listens to me and she doesn't compare. She's not like, well, I feel worse than you. <laughs> you know, she would never say that. She listens earnestly and, and it's amazing. I mean, we built this beautiful rainbow bridge to each other like uh, a month and a half ago and had 
a really intense, amazing talk and cleared out any old crap. And now, I mean, seriously, we can talk for an hour and 40 minutes on the phone like it's nothing. We talk on the phone every single day now. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So th just having the talk with her today reminded me of why I quit why I quit smoking. You know, they're reminding me that even smoking marijuana, it's like, a, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Marijuana was very helpful, helpful for me for quite a while off and on for my mental well-being, but I don't need it anymore. And if I insist on using something that used to be helpful for me when I don't need it anymore, it is damaging me. It is holding me back. It is suppressing me. And she might helped me remember about the, you know, it was affecting my thyroid negatively. I feel like my thyroid is back to perfect normal now. I've gained at least 10 pounds since I quit smoking. And um, let's see, what else? It accelerate, accelerated my heart rate. Um, the feeling of paranoia that came in, um, even my eyesight has gotten better. There's different things. The money, I used to spend over $300 a month on medical marijuana easily. And for me, I cannot just smoke in the evening. When I started smoking, when I start not when I start smoking again, because I'm not planning on starting again, but any time that I've ever started smoking again, I, I have told myself every single time, I'm only going to smoke in the evening, and I'm only going to smoke a little bit. Nope. It's maybe a week later at the most, and I am smoking every day, all day long, without, without a doubt, and I am under no illusion that that has changed. No, 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 nope. And I remember in one of my last videos when I was quitting, I was like, yeah, my, my, and it's saying it now. Well, now that you've shed that personal identity, the addict, you know, that addictive behavior, you could totally just smoke in the evenings. No, 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 uh-uh. That's more of what I'm shedding. They're showing me right now. It's, it's pretty tricky, you know, to actually be able to see that. That's what a blessing to be able to see that that's, I'm shedding more of that addict. Whoo, and when it comes up and it's shedding like a snake and it's coming up over my eyes, that's when I feel like really reaching out for something that, that, that felt like it brought me comfort before. Even a bad relationship. I don't reach out to those anymore. Mm-mm, no way. And I'm not, and I haven't reached out for marijuana. And, um... You know, I don't even think about drinking anymore. I haven't drank for about 16 and a half years now. You know, mar no, alcohol, uh, I'm under zero illusion that that would ever make me feel better for even one second. That That's sh sure death for me. So, Ancients, what else has been parading through? Well, a, a deep desire for a dog because I, you know, in the last place I lived, I, I my roommate was... Um, was the male alcoholic that I learned so much from. I got to shed so much in a year and a half. <laughs> I'm super grateful I'm in my own space and not feeling anybody else's energy. But I left my dog with him and his dog because they were puppies together. And I absolutely knew, you know, it was it was a really it was a really tough decision to make, but but I absolutely I and I asked the ancients, I was just like, well, and the divine, it's all, it's all the same to me. Divine, what is the most loving thing I could possibly do in this situation? And it was to leave them together. So, you know, I am in this beautiful RV park, and I do see dog people that have dogs around here. And I am going to ask this lovely woman that owns the RV park, I'm going to ask her if I can get a small dog. That would make me really, 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 really happy. <laughs> I want a small dog so bad. I just do so much better when I have a dog. So, so I'm going to start focusing on not missing the dogs that I've had, but on the dog that I'm going to get. Yes, that's what I'll do for sure. So ancients, is there anything, anything else that we want to talk about right now? If you have anything that you want to talk about, you know, a person can think, oh, that's not important, you know, or that has nothing to do with her videos. I have no idea what I'm ever going to talk about. I talk about whatever, whatever comes out. 
So if you if there's something bothering you that you can't stop thinking about, that's satsang. If you get a hold of me and we talk about that, you know, the ancients are here too and and we're all talking about it and just this just this information comes through. It's not like me going, "Oh, I know how you can fix that." No, it's in the moment and I'm often really really surprised at what comes through and how much it resonates with the person I'm talking to. It's it's quite a gift. It's it's the epitome of satsang. It's conversations with our own true nature and 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 it helps us get past, you know, the personal identity that we've always identified ourselves to be. You know, the my own true nature is a lot less mentally active than the personal identity. So you can leave me a comment in the comment section also, and I will respond to you there. I think that's about it for now. Yes, it is. I love you so much. I'll talk to you really soon.